Hey, I want to start by asking you about the primary for Republican gubernatorial candidates here in Wisconsin. The Trump-backed candidate, Tim Michaels, won the GOP primary for governor last night. What's your takeaway there in that race? Well, it's another reminder that democracy itself is on the ballot in November. We have a lot of election deniers out there running for office, many of them supported by the former president, like in Wisconsin, and they are pledging to uh, dishonor the sanctity of our votes, to uh, uh, overthrow uh, national elections. And it's a very dangerous moment. It just didn't end on January 6th with an attempted violent overthrow of our government, but this big lie persist today, including here in Wisconsin. So I think people are going to have a really clear choice to make come November. Governor Evers uh, respecting their vote and and moving this state in a very positive direction right now. What do you say to voters who are frustrated that it looks like in November it's going to be, to your point, Donald Trump on the ballot, it's going to be Joe Biden, the economy on the ballot, and there's a fear there won't be as much conversation about the future of charter schools or how to fix roads in Wisconsin, but it's going to be Trump-Biden, a referendum on those two guys in our gubernatorial race and probably the U.S. Senate race. Yeah, you know, I really hope it doesn't uh, resort to that because Governor Evers has made great progress here in Wisconsin. He pledged to fix the damn roads, and he's doing that now. Uh, he's out there expanding broadband access, especially in rural communities. No one has placed a higher priority on quality educational opportunities than, than Governor Evers as a former educator himself, principal, superintendent, state superintendent. And, and it's just the civility that he brings to his leadership style. We need more of that these days in both Madison and in Washington, quite frankly. Is it fair to hold Joe Biden and Democrats responsible, at least partially, for the economy and where we are? Well, I, I, it would be fair if the other side had a plan, if they had a plan B, but they don't. They're just the politics of grievance and criticism. But progress has been made, especially uh, the past year and a half. It's for getting inflationary pressures down. We've seen gas prices uh, decline dramatically. We're starting to see inflation. And this was global, John. This wasn't just unique to the United States. This was happening throughout the globe because of the global pandemic, because of Putin's uh, illegal war against Ukraine, supply chain uh, bottlenecks throughout the globe. Uh, but we Democrats have had a plan that we are executing right now to block, the, to break the log jam. We're just signing the CHIPS Act now to make chip manufacturing a domestic priority for national security and for our economy. We're finally passing legislation that allow price negotiation for prescription drugs, uh, which is long overdue, to bring price release relief for seniors. So I believe a lot of progress has been made. I'd be proud to run uh, on that record. And again, I think it's going to be a clear choice this November between the progress of Democrats putting people over politics versus Republicans who want to politicize and criticize everything. U.S. Congressman Ron Kind is with us on WTMJ. Today, President Biden said that the U.S. has, quote, zero inflation hours after the consumer price index numbers showed that it's eight and a half percent annually. What do you say to Americans who are still struggling to pay their bills when the president stands up there and uses some number not commonly used to say inflation's at zero percent? Well, that was month to month, uh, obviously. Uh, clearly, from a year ago, uh, when we were emerging from the, it was a different economic situation. But Joe Biden recognizes the price pressure that working families have right now. Gas prices are still too high. Food prices, back to school items, still too high. The point is, we've got a plan, and we're executing that right now. And we are seeing progress. We had inflation that declined from last month. And that's what he's referring to, is the progress being made. Now, if the other side has a better idea, the first one that will listen to it is Joe Biden. He believes in the merit of bipartisanship, finding common ground. Many of the bills that we've enacted into law now did enjoy bipartisan support, including the CHIPS Act. Uh, we'd like to have more of that. But Joe Biden, again, ran on that pledge to try to work to find that common ground with all Americans. And uh, again, that's the type of leadership I think most people are craving. Toxic burn pit legislation finally gets passed there in Washington. Very, very important measure. Um, how proud are you that this got done? Very proud. Long overdue. I mean, we're not just talking the burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan that our veterans were exposed to. And who better to understand than Joe Biden? His son, Bo, served there, later developed cancer and died. I mean, if anyone gets it, it's President Biden and the necessity for it. But it also dates back to Vietnam. Asian orange exposure and some of the toxic exposure that our Vietnam vets uh, suffered and, and are still dealing with it today. So it was good that we got it done in a bipartisan fashion. It was disappointing that my Republican colleagues were holding it hostage because of a political temper tantrum that they were having. 
Listen, the lives of our veterans should never be used as political pawns, period, full stop. They should be ashamed of themselves, but I do give them credit for realizing their error, coming back and supporting the legislation that President Biden just signed into law today. As your term gets closer to being done here, are you melancholy about your decision not to run again? Are you sad because of what you've accomplished and the time you've spent there? John, you always wish you could do more. I feel that way too. There's more that I'd like to accomplish, but democracy sometimes grinds slowly. I'm proud of the 26 years I've been able to represent people here in Wisconsin in Congress. Um, but 26 years is a long time. It's been a great personal honor, but I never meant for it to be an honor for my entire lifetime. So Tony and I are looking forward to our next chapter, but that chapter is going to include here in Wisconsin, where she and I were born and raised, where we raised our family. We're going to find new ways of contributing, but we do need good people willing to step up and serve in public service. And that's one of the reasons why I've been such a strong backer of Brad Taft and the terrific job I know he will do putting people over politics in Congress. U.S. Congressman Ron Kind, thank you so much for being with us, Congressman. Thanks, John. My pleasure.